Hey, and welcome to the highlights of episode number 183 with Chris Kresser. Some of my favorite parts of this episode were when he shares the four lifestyle factors that you need to consider for epic health. I also loved when he talks about how to turn your genes on and off, how to reduce stress, and the power of a digital detox and how to actually do it. But there is so much more wisdom and knowledge that you get in the full episode. So to listen to the full podcast and get all the info in the show notes, head on over to melissaambrosini.com forward slash 183 right now. Alberto, welcome to the show. I'm so excited for our conversation today. Now, I am fascinated to hear how you got into doing the work that you do and how your journey unfolded. So can you take us back and tell us your story and how you sure. got to where you are today doing the wonderful work that you now do? Well, Melissa, initially I started out in a brain laboratory and we were looking at how the brain could create psychosomatic health because we knew that it could create psychosomatic disease, but can you create extraordinary health and communion and bliss and connection to nature and deep meditation? And we were slicing and dicing and staining the brain and putting it under the microscope. And and one day I realized I was looking out of the wrong end of the microscope, that instead of going smaller and smaller, I had to go bigger and bigger, even to to work with people who had a whole different conception about reality than we did. So I closed my lab down at San Francisco State University and I headed to the Amazon. And I spent years working with the shamans in the Amazon who knew how to create health. They knew how to use the power of the mind and of the spirit and of the medicine plants, of the power plants to create extraordinary health. So I spent many years studying with them and eventually became became a student of the shaman. So I've, I'm kind of a Western shaman, even though I'm a medical anthropologist by training. And what I discovered is that they knew how to get our health span to equal our lifespan, whereas we just you know we don't have a we don't have a healthcare system in the West. We have a disease care system, and they knew how to create extraordinary health. I actually was funded by a big Swiss pharma, and they wanted to discover the next big cancer cure. And the Amazon is nature's pharmacy. But what happened is that everywhere I went, there was no cancer, there was no dementia, there was no heart disease, no breast cancer. These are the illnesses of the West. But then I saw the villagers that I had studied with years before, the minute that they began to eat like we do in the West, They began to get sick like we do and to get obese and to die like we do. So there's something about the Western diet and the Western belief system that is deadly. It's pretty toxic. Mm. Now, you say that by learning this ancient shamanic wisdom, we can heal disease, eliminate emotional suffering, and even grow a new body, which is the title of your new book, which I absolutely love. Yes, you can with this ancient shamanic wisdom, but see, we're growing a new body anyway. You know, there's nobody in the planet that's older than seven years of age, because every seven years we grow an entirely new body. And if you're running the software, the programming that's in your family, seven years from today, you're going to have a slightly older and more wrinkled body than the one you have now. But if you download version 2.0 of the human software, you can grow a new body that ages differently and heals differently and even dies differently. Before we dive into that, what is a shaman? Can you tell us what a shaman is or can anyone become a shaman? What is a shaman? A shaman, the shamans were the very first neuroscientists, but the shamans in, at least in the Andes and in the Amazon where I studied, they were the wisdom keepers. And they were the keepers of an ancient tradition that you have in Australia also. But as you know, it's been devastated by the church and by the state. And now the the indigenous people are living in poverty with terrible alcoholism. But these were the ancient wisdom keepers. And they knew how to work with the medicine plants. 
Can you share some of these amazing, powerful herbs? These are the plants that are considered sacred plants by every traditional society. The sacred plants were the ones that switched on the longevity genes and the detoxifying processes in the body, what in biology are called the NRF2 activators. And primarily, they are found in broccoli, like broccoli flowers. You know, the healing power of broccoli is extraordinary. And that's because of sulforaphane, which is the active ingredient that will switch on these longevity genes. And we know curcumin, for example, in, in India, where there's, the, where there's a lot of curcumin consumed, the Indians have, in India, 15% of the Alzheimer's rate that we have in America because they eat a lot of curry. And the other one that we work with that you can get in the health food store is the resveratrol that was found in the skin of grapes. And that's extraordinarily powerful. It switches on all of these genes that create health. Now, there are many others, but we cannot get the ones that I work with in the Amazon. You cannot get these locally at your health food store. But in every culture, these were the sacred plants, the ones that allowed you to live a long and healthy life. Melissa, how old are you, I'm, if I may ask? I'm 32. You're 32. See, what happens is that biology programmed us for reproduction and not for longevity. So the way that biology, that Mother Nature ensured longevity for the species was by getting us to reproduce. So she invested really heavily in our reproductive years up to about the age of 35. After the age of 35, a bunch of detox and repair systems begin to shut down. So your growth hormone begins to shut down, your glutathione production goes to nearly zero. So you've got three more good years. No, but you're eating healthy and well, so you've got many, many more good years. So what happened is that nature shuts these systems down for us. So by the age of 40, you're not producing glutathione anymore. And this is the master antioxidant in the body and the, the master scavenger of toxins transports toxins out of the body. So what these plants, what they do is they will turn on these systems that nature shut down. What you're doing in effect is you're hacking your biology. How can we detox the brain and the mind right now? Because I know a lot of people listening will, they can relate to some toxic thoughts that are going round and around in their brain. So how can we detox those thoughts now? Well, see, the thing is you cannot change your mind without changing your brain first. Today, we've been exposed to toxins that didn't exist 100 years ago and that our body doesn't know how to eliminate. Now, we store toxins in fat because these are the very long-lived molecules. So while you grow a new body every seven years, the fat in your body does not change unless you burn it. So the body stores toxins in long-lived molecules, which are the fat molecules, and your brain is 70% fat. And if you've been exposed to mercury or to lead, the body's not able to eliminate these toxins. But there's a product called alpha-lipoic acid, <clears throat> ALA, that's extraordinary for helping the brain to eliminate toxins. We cannot heal our emotions if, our, if we have a bunch of mercury in our brain. It's very difficult to do. So today, the detox, which is the very first part of growing a new body, is essential. For a lot of people, I've found that they think that detoxing is something that they should just do once a year or maybe every season. But how can we implement some detoxifying choices or principles into our everyday life so that we're constantly supporting our body? Most of the time, when people detox, they're, they're cleaning out the filters. They're cleaning out the liver or the gallbladder or the kidneys or the blood. But we want to detox the brain. We want to detox neurons. We want to help cells to eliminate toxins that they've not been able to eliminate for a long time. And you do this with some of the supplements that we talked about, like curcumin. 
And you do this with the, with broccoli, with eating broccoli or taking the active ingredient in broccoli, which is called sulforaphane. So if you take that for a week, you kickstart detox mechanisms that are innate in the body, but that are not operant for many people because they've been overwhelmed. But before the body can, before the brain can detox, you've got to remember that it's the liver primarily that detoxifies poisons in the body. So we have to support the liver first. The body will not let you detox if your liver's not fully online. And you do that with magnesium, zinc, and B12. And then then you can use the detoxifiers that we talked about. And you'll be surprised how quickly, how quickly you begin to detoxify the brain. So I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. One of my students came to my office, made an appointment, and brought her husband. And I said, how can I help you? And she said to me, my husband is a horrible lover. Can you help him? Can you help us? He's a terrible lover. And I said to her, look, I don't do family therapy. I'm sorry. I can recommend somebody to you. He said, no, no, no. We really want to work with you. I said, I'm sorry. I don't do, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know how to... I'm not trained to do that kind of work. But I'll tell you, I said, I'll tell you what, come back in six weeks and I'll have a session to work on upgrading your field and maybe helping you clear any trauma around this. But I don't have another opening for six weeks, but I put them on the detoxifiers and on DHA, the omega-3 fatty acid that will repair the brain in six weeks. Now, the problem with this fellow is he worked on Wall Street, very successful, very competitive, and he always wanted to be number one and come first. Well, that doesn't work with your with your lover. <laughs> so they came back six weeks later, and in that time, he had managed to repair the region in the brain that allows you to reset the brain and get out of fight or flight, get out of the stress mode. And they came back and she said, it's amazing. I don't know what you did, Alberto, but he's become a gentle, caring lover in these six weeks. This is fantastic. And we've told our friends about you. And of course, he was able to relax and be at ease and, and be gentle and loving with the woman he had married. We have to repair the brain today because most of us have been so stressed out and so affected by the poisons in our food and in our environment. What is some other ancient shamanic wisdom that can help us become a modern day shaman? Well, Melissa, I think that today, from my perspective, we all have to become our medicine men and medicine women. We cannot rely on medicine to keep us healthy. It's just the opposite. Medicine is going to keep us sick. Unfortunately, the, the medical profession and doctors are really, really good people, but they're educated today by big pharma. And we have to become our own healers and our own medicine people. And we do that by, by not only becoming conscious of how we eat and what we eat, but one of the best remedies that I know is one that you can prepare at home and you have to prepare it at home, which is to combat candida. And as you know, candida is a yeast. It's an invasive yeast. That's the result of all of the sugar that we eat. So in the United States, a hundred years ago, people ate, they, people ate a hundred and five pounds of sugar a year. Today, the average American eats 185 pounds of sugar. Wow. And I assume that it's similar in Australia, isn't it? Yeah, it's just increasing and it's absurd. And obesity is just going up. Diabetes, heart disease, all of these things no. are just on the rise. Yep. And this is all sugar related. Well, what happens is that your gut is colonized by the yeast that eats sugar. And that's candida. But we can't get it out. We don't know how to get it out, but there's a way that you can do this at home, which is with another yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii, Saccharomyces boulardii, which competes with the candida. See, what the candida does 
is that it moves into the best apartments, the penthouse apartments, and gets all the parking spots. So when you take a little probiotic, which is a really teeny little creature, it's not going to be able to displace the candida, the yeast from your gut. It's going to go right through you and out of you. So you've got to deal first with this yeast overgrowth that most people have. And many women will get it vaginally. Many people will get it in their toenails. But it's in the gut of most every person that consumes sugar like an ordinary human being. So the Boulardi, you can purchase this in a health food store. But then you have to grow your own yeast. So you have to take really, really ripe fruit and boil it for 20 minutes, let it cool back down to room temperature, and then open a couple of capsules of Boulardi and let it reproduce. And after two or three days, the yeast will be fermenting the sugar into alcohol and all the sweetness will be gone. And you will have a tremendously powerful remedy for eliminating the candida in your gut and helping to restore the balance in your flora so that you can digest food and be nourished by it. And you can produce also the neurotransmitters that you need to have a balanced brain. Because if your gut is broken, most of your neurotransmitters like serotonin are produced in your gut and you're not going to have access to the brain chemistry you need to be happy. Is there any other ancient shamanic healing secrets that you can share with us? Well, there are a couple of others. The shamans say that before we were born, that we were all gathered in a great green field and a very big angel came out and said, you know, this is going to be a very difficult time for the earth. There's going to be climate change. There's going to be hunger. There's going to be fires raging through the earth. There's going to be conflict and war. Who wants to come? We need healers. Who wants to come? And we all raised our hands. So we all chose to be born at this time to be part of the solution. And we didn't come here to spend another year in therapy. We came here to be part of a revolution to what the shamans say is a new human that is being born in the planet today. So the object of the energy medicine practices of the shamans, which is what I teach our students, is not only to heal from disease, but to become an extraordinary human. The work begins when you're healed or when you're healing. And that's when you can take a quantum leap to become this new human that, that we are calling homo luminous, not homo sapiens. We talk about wanting to become enlightened. For the shamanic practitioners, enlightenment is where it starts, not where it ends. This is where we begin to really participate in creating the world and in, in what is called dreaming the world into being. If you have not dedicated your life in some way to be of service, then it won't work effectively. And let me, let me give you an example of how this goes. I, I was having dinner with a couple of scientist friends, and they loved to taunt me, and we were having a glass of wine. And they said, Alberto, you read the research about probiotics, right? The new cutting-edge research out of Israel and Harvard that probiotics are useless. And I said, yeah, I read it, but it was flawed experimental design, bad design. He said, what do you mean bad design? This is Harvard. This is, you know, this is, I said, yeah, it was flawed design. So they said, okay, explain how it was flawed. I said, well, if you think about the mind of Gaia, of the planet, the mind of the planet is bacterial. So bacteria have been around for 2,000 million years. And we've just been around for a little teeny bit of time, for 2 million years. The mind of the planet is bacterial. They communicate with each other. They're always interacting. They're communicating through photons and biophotons. In the planet, the mind of the planet realizes that humans are a parasite and that we're killing the planet. We're killing so many species. So you have to talk to your probiotics. Remember that they're alive and you've got to say to them, 
I'm not part of the problem. I'm part of the solution. I'm here to make a difference, to really bring beauty and healing to the earth. And if you don't talk to them, they might think you're part of the problem and go out of their way to try to do away with you. But remember, when you, when you do take probiotics, I'm sure you do, that they're living beings. Talk to them. Talk to them.